The modern stoplight that we all know today was invented in the early 1900s by entrepreneur Garrett Morgan. And while the idea has evolved to be used as a tool for games that may or may not try to save lives, for the most part it has been an incredibly useful innovation when it comes to preventing deaths. It would be really nice if your Yasuo, who swears he's on his power spike, would have had a red light to remind him not to chase after that forbidden 11th death. But instead, he's cosplaying every contestant of Squid Games all at once. Sadly, this doesn't exist for League of Legends. Or at least it didn't until today. We're going to be giving you the magical stoplight that will stop the League equivalent of this from happening in your games. It'll prevent you from inting, it'll stop your teammates from running it down, and overall just make your playing experience more like a casual drive to the supermarket instead of the dumpster fire crash that you usually experience every time you queue up. With that being said, this magical stoplight works for all roles. And as a quick reminder, this guide comes from the number one place to actually improve at League of Legends, Skillcapped. We teach League the right way by creating the best guides designed to climb out of low elos stupidly fast. Trying to mimic pro play or high elo streams will only slow you down as they don't show you how to exploit low elo like we do, which is definitely necessary for carrying teammates from hell. In fact, we're so confident in our methods that we're the only service to guarantee you'll climb 5 divisions when actively using our service. So check us out after this. The green light rule exists to help us identify when it's okay to actually go for certain plays, and it all starts with one idea, recognizing your state of advantage. This can come in many forms, but let's use an example game that I played recently while recording some smurf commentaries. This game started off almost like a mirror. I set up to gank bot after my full clear, while the enemy jungler did the same on the opposite side of the map. I get a kill bottom, while Lilia gets a kill top. The difference starts when I channel my recall, but my opponent doesn't. After walking towards my gromp to find a counter jungle, I spot her on the map, and by pressing tab, I can easily verify that she hasn't recalled yet. Almost instantly, I want to think about how I win now, and what my advantage might be. I might be out the gromp, but that gromp definitely didn't come for free. Let's listen to what I said earlier in the game when I had the chance to make the same play and take hers. I can play for her gromp respawn, but it does take a long time. I knew that it would cost me a lot of tempo in order to stay and take the gromp. If Lilia recalled and came back here after I took it, she would have a timer where I wouldn't have items and couldn't easily protect my bot lane from a gank, or whatever other play she wanted to look for here. Basically, we're now in the exact situation I just explained, except I have the item advantage and Lilia does not. When you recognize this state of advantage, a green light should appear in your head, giving you the go ahead to make a play. Oh, she actually stayed and didn't recall. That's insane. Her base is super delayed now. Her raptors are going to be up and she won't be there to defend them because she's going to reset to bot side most likely. I was just assuming that Lilia would base here and then recall to her gromp giving me the window to then just go to her top side and trade back that camp. But that's not actually what she does. Can't take a gromp because I'm losing push bottom unless I gank it. Or she just does this. I don't have the ability to really respond to this, but I can just like threaten to go kill her on her gromp now. This is why like reset timers are so important because it just opens up so many plays for people. Because I recognize this state of advantage, I'm easily able to invade and take away her bot side camps while getting her flash in the process. If I had played it a bit better and even placed a ward before leaping, I would have ended up with a kill too. Regardless, I still get a huge lead here because I even managed to get the gank off bottom afterwards as well, propelling me into a great state to carry the game. Okay, so that's it, right? Well, that seems simple enough, but... Not really. The extra layer and what makes this rule so effective is actually the next step. Recognizing your own green light is relatively simple. Any form of advantage is great for this. Usually this is just when you have a lot of resources over your opponents, whether it be health, mana, summoner spells, or time. Really anything in the game can be thought of as a resource, and we have plenty of guides that talk about specific strategies for advantages to watch right after this. The hard part though, and the part that's most critical to the success of this rule, is recognizing your teammates' green lights as well. Well, what do you mean? Didn't you literally just walk in and get the invade even after you just said you couldn't? Well, yeah, but if we look back in the game, you'll see the point in which I realized my mid laner actually had a green light as well. 
After witnessing this trade earlier, I know now that Victor has a massive advantage in terms of health mid lane, giving him the go ahead too. If Katarina stays in lane, I know that she'll be low and a non-threat when rotating to me, or at the very least, if she recalls, she'd be missing a wave or more at her tower for coming over during the invade. The fact that Victor and I both had green lights is what makes this play possible. The most important thing when using this strategy is to make sure that the majority of teammates involved are on the same page. Let's expand on this by looking at another example quickly. This is from a coaching session for a high platinum ADC player that I was doing last week. Identifying his green light of having Baron, but the fact that his teammates were at red lights stops a massive throw from happening. Okay, after this, you can go top wave and just take the top tower, 600 gold. Hopefully your team's gonna, yeah. team goes mid. Of course, now we want to use our big advantage. The Baron buff lets us siege easily, so it makes sense to just pressure their base as much as we can during the limited duration of the buff. Ideally, we want to have both top and mid pushed up at the same time so it becomes difficult to flank us. Senna could set up a lot of vision, and then it puts our opponents in a difficult position. They could answer top, but in doing so they would need to send resources that they need in order to protect mid, letting that tower go. And the opposite is also true. If they send resources from top to mid, Sivir would be able to take things for free, and overall the opponents are just in a really awkward spot. We feel strong with a lot of items and Baron. While we do have a green light individually, the same is not true for our team. No one is pushing mid-wave, and Mord and Zoe are in base. Clearly this means that they are not ready to go, and should be thought of as is stopped at a red light. You can hear me make this call to leave once we realize this. You do have to be of Gnar, but... Okay, let's just leave. There's no reason yeah. to end here, no one's showing. This scenario comes up a lot, and in the game right after this, we had a very similar crisis that was avoided for the exact same reason. Okay, play chill. Don't walk up, don't walk up. You have to wait for a Akali to have pressure, you have to wait for Fjord to have pressure. You're just buffing wave here and not staying in range to die. That's their one window to like actually kill you guys. We can even watch our challenger player Espen hold back from making a play due to not having his jungler ready in a very similar manner. Don't know if I can do a whole lot up here. Mordekaiser could be going back onto Herald. He is. I mean, I just have to keep canceling him from doing Herald. Malsaha will come here now, which is fine. I'm not too bothered about that. I mean, I'm, I don't mind finding this. It can't be real that I'm fighting this on my own. Oh, well, I guess I just have to let them. He's clearly frustrated with his team, but in the end he stays composed and makes the right call. While this seems minute and like it wouldn't be that common of a mistake, it's actually the main reason why games are thrown in lower elo. Let's switch to another coaching session that I was doing, except this time I had no input during the game. My student is massively ahead, and is pretty much solo carrying. He finds a great teamfight win and gets an ace while being the only one left alive. This lets him solo push mid lane and take the inhibitor. He surely feels incredibly strong right now being 20 and 4, and I don't know who wouldn't in that situation, but we need to stop and think about if we should continue a play in this position. All of our teammates besides Misfortune are in base or dead. While we have the green light with a huge item and level advantage, our teammates do not. He gets overconfident in his strength and ends up falling, giving away 800 gold in shutdowns and massive amounts of catch-up XP. Individually, this mistake probably wouldn't lose the game on its own, but it actually happens multiple times in a row until the game is over. Again here, because he doesn't recognize that his misfortune is in base, and later trying to push the mid wave, falling prey to the exact same thing. In both of these situations, you can see how simply not identifying his teammates' red lights and trying to force due to an individual lead caused him to throw that very advantage away. Learning from mistakes and improving is part of the process to becoming a better player, and when it just so happens that you can fix three mistakes in one by implementing this rule, it should be pretty apparent why it can be so good. In short, if your teammates are at red lights, even if you have the green, you have to imagine that you're stuck behind them. Kind of like when the person in front of you is texting at the light when it changes and they just don't move. It's annoying, but it's not like you can just ram through them. You have to wait until they're ready to go. So we know what to do when our teammates have red lights and we have a green light, but what about the opposite? You can stop yourself from going in and rear-ending the person in front of you, but you can't stop your teammates from doing the same to you. So what do we do in the case of a metaphorical rear-end situation? Let's go into another example to explain. We're just coming off the end of a successful teamfight. 
I ended up cleaning up several kills here and even managed to push down two towers, diving the enemy talent in the process. Without Baron or Dragon up on the map and all of my jungle camps available, the most logical thing now would be to recall and then take all of our camps and fix waves before the objectives spawn. My team definitely isn't doing too great here and I just want them to catch up in terms of gold and XP before we go for any fights. Pushing out top and mid waves would let them do that and then let us set up vision around Baron. We could force our opponents to come to us at the objective so we can fight them in our territory and then that's the green light. Without any significant advantage, my teammates definitely don't have any green lights here to look for the fight without me. And since I want to push out top here and let my team clear camps, I'm not really trying to do anything aggressive right now either, but my team clearly has different ideas. Entertaining this without me there. Oh no, guys. I just want to be pushing top, please. The only thing you can do in this situation is just realize that your whole team doesn't see it like that. They think they have four green lights while I know that it's really red. Here's the thing. Rules only matter if everyone is following them. If your teammates are all breaking the rules, you should too, or you're just going to ask to be in an accident when someone drives through the red light and causes a crash. The best thing to do is just find a way to get everyone onto the same page to avoid chaos, even if that means making the wrong play. Of course, this fight is bad and started in the worst way possible, but when all of my team is acting like we have a green light, I just have to go with the flow of traffic. In doing so, it helps you avoid catastrophic events and can sometimes even result in very positive outcomes. While I did manage to get a decent result out of a bad situation, ideally I would have recognized even earlier and been there sooner. There will be plenty of bad plays within a game, but if you ever realize that you are going against the flow of traffic, it's a good idea to figure out how you could have avoided the accident. In the earlier AC examples, you'll see this idea as I forced him to recall even in spots where he wanted to just go collect waves. I'm gonna just reset, yeah, reset, 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 reset. Just base, just base. Your son is recalling here, so there's nothing you, you're gonna get by staying on map. You just get your BS word. You just wanna uh -oh. sync with your teammates here. By recalling at the same time as your team, you'll increase the odds that you will all end up on green lights together. You'll be coming from base, all with full HP, as many items as you can get, and just generally be close to each other on the map. This gives way less of a chance for your teammates to int, since you will always be close by if you need to respond, and you know that you'll be ready to fight as well. There's a lot of preventative measures that go into making plays work, on top of just reactionary ones, and while we might not always be able to see it in the moment, looking at your own games and going back before bad plays happen can let you spot ideas like this where you can sync up with your team just a little bit better. It's kind of just the league version of defensive driving. Sometimes you have to serve out of your lane to avoid a crash. You may have broken the rules, but in the end, it saved lives. The only requirement is that you think everyone else driving on the road is an idiot and be ready for them to try to kill you at all times, which, yeah, that parallel is pretty much exactly the same as league. To recap all of this, you need to first identify you and your teammates' green lights and red lights. Figure out who's strong and who's ready to fight, and then do your best to make sure as many people are on the same page as possible. Whether it means you all stop at the red light or go at the green, it doesn't really matter as long as the majority of people are on the same page. In a game with five players per team, you will pretty much always have the vote that sways the majority, so remember that, and realize you have a lot more control of your inting teams than you might have thought previously. In the end, even if you're a good Samaritan and follow all the traffic laws and regulations, accidents are still going to happen. However, the stakes in League aren't nearly as high as real life, and accidents are totally okay, encouraged even. We strive to obviously never fall behind, but it will happen, and when it does, it should now be a lot easier after watching this guide to figure out just what went wrong and how to fix it for next time. All right, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skillcapped. We offer a 5 division rank up guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week with over 2,000 guides curated into over 270 courses. No one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell over 1,100 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all your questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below.
Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.